Hi everyone, this is Josh from LeakDev. Today, we're going to talk about the Leakdev question, the best time to buy and sell stock problems, listed from the 75 curated questions from Blind. This list is, uh, contains questions that Scotty and I both personally use to start studying for programming interviews that we've used to actually get offers from multiple companies, including tech companies from Fang. Now, if you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe to help motivate us to continue pushing out these content. So let's get started. This is Leak Code Problem number 121, Best Time to Buy and Sell Stock. Feel free to pause the video and read the question to yourself. However, the basic gist of it is that you are given an array of, element, of integers that represent stock prices for a given day with each index of the array being the specific day. And the goal of the problem is that you will make one set of transaction, a transaction being buying a stock and selling a stock. And you want to you want to create an algorithm that maximizes the profit that you can get from the array. So if you look, look in our example one, given our array input seven one five three six four, we want to create an algorithm that would give us five, which is the maximum profit we can make from buying a stock and then selling it. Specifically, if we were to buy a stock on day two, where it is $1, and then sell it on day five, where it is $6. And now onto the whiteboard. On the screen, we have our array, our example one array, and we're gonna try and figure out how we can get the answer to this problem. So the first thing in the interview, we'll throw out your naive solution, it's your basic uh, n square uh, n square solution, which in this case it could be a very brute force nested for loop where we try every single combination. I made a little animation to showcase this algorithm. As you can see, we have our array, and then we keep track of two variables: our max profit and our current profit, and we have two arrows to indicate our buy date and our sell date. So right now, our buy date is on the first on of seven dollars and our sell date is on the second index at one so let's just see how this plays out so day one we sell and we sell our stock for one dollar and so we have negative six which is not the answer so we continue day two nope day three nope day four nope and so on and so forth now, on the second day, we chose to buy the $1 stock, and then we repeat the same algorithm. And then eventually we hit day five, where we sell for $6, and we now update our max profit to be five. Then we just let this algorithm continue. And then eventually we'll end the loop and as you and then we'll return the max profit that we have calculated from our naive solution. Now that we've developed an intuition for what our naive solution will look like, let's go implement it. Or specifically, I'm just going to cheat and I'm just gonna copy and paste the solution I already implemented. So like we've talked about, we're going to have a variable max that will keep track of all the profits that we have to keep track of the maximum profit that we encounter in our algorithm. We try every single combination. We'll have two for loops. The first for loop will be the buy day, the specifically the days that we will buy the stock, and the inner loop will indicate the days that we sell the stock. Note that it's important that we set J to be I plus one, specifically because we cannot sell a stock right before you buy one of course and that makes logical sense you can't sell something that you don't own continuing on we have our i is zero and our j is currently zero plus one or one so we'll go through our first example and we'll store we'll store our profit which we calculate by subtracting the price of the stock that we're selling in this case it's one with cost that we took to 
buy the stock, which is 7, giving us a net profit of negative 6. Now at this point, I did a max equals max dot max, and then I did the max of our profit and max. And what I'm basically saying is that here, set max to be the max of either of our profit or itself. If our profit is larger than max, then our max now becomes our profit. And if max is greater than our profit, then the max just stays the same and nothing happens. And so we just continue trying every single combination, picking days to sell our stock and keeping track of what the, our max profit we encountered was. And then we would set our inner loop, and then we'll iterate over our outer loop, which means we will buy a stock on day two where it is $1, and we will apply the same logic and keep going until eventually we reach day seven, and then we exit our loop. And then finally, once we have finished iterating through every single combination, we would return the max profit that we found. So that's awesome. So that, that gives us our naive solution, but can we do better? Well, let's go back to the whiteboard. Back on the whiteboard. Now, how can we find an answer that's better than n squared? Well, let's brainstorm a bit. The next thing better than an n squared solution is a n log n solution. Unfortunately, an n log n solution typically usually involves sorting something. In this case, the array represents our stock prices throughout time period. We can't sort the days uh, as that would, would not give us anything useful. The next best algorithm after n log n is O of n. Now, how can we get an O of n solution? I think the mantra uh, buy low, sell high is actually a pretty good idea to solve this problem, uh, specifically a greedy algorithm. Let me demonstrate. Scroll all the way down to this specific problem. Now, unlike the a normal stock market, we have a array that represents all the stock prices in the future. We know we can predict the future and pick the best stocks for us to profit off of. If we think about this, if we have, if we start on day one like we have in our algorithm, our naive brute force algorithm, we have five. And the idea is that we want to buy low and sell high. So maybe we do the same thing and just we start with a for loop, right? Our current value is where we buy a stock is, day, uh, is $5 a share. And then on day two, we are trying to sell the stock for $3. That will give us a profit of minus two. This is where we, we start deviating from the try every combination idea. At the end of the day, we have a share at $5 and a share at $3. No matter what happens afterwards, we know 100% that buying a share at $3 will give us more profit than buying a share at $5. What we really care about is what the smallest amount of dollar a share has that we've encountered so far. Let's say we keep a variable that keeps track of our lowest cost, right? So I'll just say min. So now min is three. And that's video on. So we go on here. So we, now our min is three and we just keep going. So now we're selling our share at $6. That would give us a profit. Uh, hit of three. It's six minus three is three. And but however, we won't change our minimum value because we know that compared to three and six, three is obviously the lowest number. So no matter what other subsequent numbers that we encounter, buying at three would always be better than buying at six or five. So we move on to day four, and now we see that we're selling this share for $1. One minus three will give us a net loss of $2, so we don't want that. However, $1 is lower than $3, and same, the same logic applies. No matter what happens afterwards, one will always be lower than three, so we will always have a higher profit if we decide to buy the, sh the share at $1. So now we get rid of our min of three. Say one, and then we continue. Now on day five, we are selling our stock for nine dollars, and that would give us a profit of nine minus one of eight dollars. And then we continue on and end our loop. 
And that uh, gives us an intuition of this greedy algorithm where we want to maximize profit and minimize the cost of the shares that we buy. It's an animation example of our greedy solution. So we have our same array, 53619, we have our max profit of zero, current profit of zero, and our minimum value is five. We start purchasing the share on the first day. Then on the second day, we have three. So three minus five is negative two, which is not profitable. However, three is less than five, so we update our minimum to be three. And then we continue to the next day, which is six. Now, six minus three is three and that gives us a net profit of three. However, six is less than our minimum value of three, so we don't buy the share at six. We continue with the share at three dollars. We can sell the share at one dollar, but we would have a net loss of two dollars. However, since one is less than three, now we could buy instead of selling at one dollar, because any subsequent transaction will give us more profit. And finally, on the last day, we can sell at $9, which will give us the profits of $8. Now that we have an intuition of what our greedy solution will look like, let's actually go and implement it. So just like last time, I will just cheat and copy and paste. In the animation we showed, we assume that the array is actually larger than 1 because we always pick the first date as our current purchase price. So if our array is less than two, i.e. it only has one element in it, we return zero because we can't buy and sell on the same day. And just like before, we have a store max variable at, at zero. And we have a new variable called current, which will keep track of our lowest purchase price. So by default for this greedy algorithm, we will just pick the first day and build up on it as we go. So one thing you'll notice is that instead of having a double for loop like our naive solution, we now have just one for loop, giving us that sweet O of n runtime. Uh, same thing like before, we start on the second day, which is the, the next day, day two, where we can actually sell the share. And we just keep going until we reach the end of our array. Just like before, we calculate our max value. If our max value is less than our current price that we're selling at for that day, minus the, the lowest share we've seen before, then we make that our max value. Otherwise, if our max value is greater than the profit that we calculated, then we just keep it as is. The one big twist here is that we also update current as we go in our loop. Now, instead of looking for the maximum value, we actually want to find the minimum because we want to always buy shares at the lowest price possible, which will always guarantee us the lowest stock purchase price, which will result in us maximizing our profit in any subsequent control days. And so we just continue doing this. And then once we finish the loop, max will be our greatest profit. And that's about it for the best time to buy and sell stock problem. Now, thanks for watching. If you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. This is Josh from Lead Dev signing off.